The topic in today's video is very important, so please make sure you understand it before moving on. The topic today is reference voltages, and they come up a lot. In fact, for the remainder of this course, I'm going to have to assume that you understand this concept. If you don't, I recommend sending an email or talking to a member of the teaching team so that you can understand the concept before we move on. In the last video, we talked about the fact that elements might share voltage. A question can arise saying, well, which elements share voltage and how do we measure that voltage? So I'm going to redraw the circuit from last time. And we're going to have a discussion about when voltages are shared and what that means. So this is the circuit from last time. And we claim that element three and element four shared the same voltage. Let's formalize that a little bit. Do you notice how the terminals of element 3 and 4 are connected to each other via a wire? This means that any wire makes voltages the same. at the point of connection, which is called a node. So this entire area here is one node. This entire area here is another node. And this entire area here is a third node. Remember, any time that I have a wire, I have the same node. But what does that really mean? It makes the voltages the same. Well, in order to measure voltage, we typically needed two points. Or two terminals is what we've been calling it. However, if you remember, one of the videos had two elements connected to each other. This is how I drew it in that video. And if this here was called V1, and this here was called V2, then we were able to develop a voltage here called V12, which is equal to V1 plus V2. Which terminals did I use was this one and this one to compute V12. It's extremely convenient to say that one of these terminals will just be given a value of zero. I say this is zero volts. And then I can say this is V12 volts above zero or below. It depends on if it's positive or negative. To put numbers to that, let's redraw that. Let's say this is 10 volts, and this is 10 volts, and I'm saying this is zero volt reference. What that means is that it's where I'm saying zero volts is going to be measured from. Then current entering here and going up here, so if I enter at the zero volt reference, and I go all the way through my circuit, we'll gain 20 volts with respect to WRT with respect to my zero volt reference. What does this really mean from the perspective of the electrons themselves? Well, electrons coming in here might already have energy. In fact, they most certainly do. So I have some energy. However, that means they must have passed through a voltage of some sort at some time in the past. I don't know where that was. I don't know what it was. So what I do instead is say, whatever has happened in the past, I'm going to start referencing from there. To give you an analogy, I might say that my house is four kilometers away from my workplace. At the same time, my workplace might be a further eight kilometers away from my friend's house. If I use my workplace as the reference, 
the workplace's zero distance, then I can say that my house is four kilometers away from the zero reference, which is my workplace. Similarly, my friend's house is eight kilometers away from the zero reference from my workplace. But I can't tell you how far away my house is from my friend's house because I don't know which direction I'm going. The key is I had to choose one of those three as my reference so that I could determine, say, travel times. It doesn't matter which one I'm going to, it matters how far away it is. It's as though we're saying the zero volt reference is my starting point. Now, it is somewhat arbitrary what I choose my zero volt reference to be. In my analogy, it could have been my house, it could have been my friend's house, or it could have been my workplace. I just decided to choose my workplace. It really doesn't matter as long as I know how far away each of them is with respect to each other. In my analogy, I didn't. In a circuit, though, we always do, and the reason for that is because circuits are closed paths. Let's do an example, and we'll take a look at what happens when we choose different reference nodes. So we'll use a somewhat simpler circuit than we did in the previous example. And let's write that as an example here. And now, let's say that this is 10 volts. This is 20 volts. If you remember from Kirchhoff's voltage law, this one isn't arbitrary. This one has to be negative 30 volts. Otherwise, my loop voltage, V loop, would not sum to zero. Now, this 10 volts is from here to here. This 20 volts is from here to here. But I might ask a question, what is this voltage here? That question is actually something of a trick question. And just so that I'm consistent, I'm going to label my nodes a little differently. VB was a bad choice. Let's say that this is a node called VA. It has a voltage. This is a node called VB. I'm just going clockwise to make sure that it's all consistent. And this is a node called VC. It was a trick question to ask you, what is VC? Because voltages must be measured with respect to something. So let's take a look at what I need to do in order to make that question meaningful. So let's write it down. What is VC? Well, this is meaningless without a reference. And we'll see something interesting. I can choose any of these nodes to be my reference. If I do, the number that I write down for VC will certainly change. However, VC's value with respect to the other voltages will not. Let's take a look. The first thing I can do is say, I need to choose a reference. This is my saying that one of those nodes is zero. I have three options. I could choose VA is zero, or VB is zero, or VC is zero. I can't choose all three because then I would violate Kirchhoff's voltage law. Let's see what happens when VA is zero. I'll redraw the circuit and then do my analysis next to it. So this is equal to zero volts. We actually use a special symbol for that. You'll see this a lot. It's three lines decreasing in length. This is meaning reference. This is VB and this is VC. Now remember, I said this was 10 volts. This was 20 volts. And this was negative 30 volts. 
but that's only with respect to the terminals of the elements. Let's see what happens. So, I might ask myself, what is VB equal with respect to my zero volts? Well, starting at zero, going up to VB, I get 10 volts. VC, starting at zero again, I go around my loop clockwise. I go first up to VB, which was 10 volts. Then I go up again, 20 volts. So VC is 30 volts. And that then explains why the voltage from here to here is negative 30 volts. What does that really mean? This voltage is 30 volts higher than this voltage, which is 0 volts. I have to go down from 30 volts back down to my reference to 0, or else KVL doesn't work. So, in this sense, when I choose VA to be my 0 volt reference, VB came out with what element 1's voltage was, 10 volts. VC was the sum of those voltages. Let's see what happens now if I choose the other nodes as my reference voltage. And remember, I'm free to do that. There's nothing wrong with choosing one reference node over another. Sometimes though, and we'll see this later on in the course, the question is very strongly suggestive that one of the nodes should be a reference. But for now, it actually really doesn't matter. Also numerically, it's not going to make a difference. So let's do that again. This time, VB will be equal to zero. And I'll once again redraw the circuit. So now this is my zero volt, and I'll put on my special symbol. It's called the ground symbol, but please don't imagine that we're actually physically connecting to ground. Very rarely do we need to do that anymore, but in the very early days of electricity, a physical connection to ground was necessary. That's why it's called ground. This is now VC, and this is VA. So the question is, what is VC and VA with respect to my zero volt reference. Remember, the elements still have a voltage drop or a voltage gain across them. So, let's take a look now. If I measure VA, then I'll be measuring the voltage from here to here. Notice how this 10 volts across element 1 is going the opposite direction. So VA is negative 10 volts with respect to VB being 0. VC is 20 volts higher than VB. But now take a look at something interesting. VC with respect to VA is still 30 volts. Take a look. If VA is negative 10, and I start at VA here, which is now negative 10 volts, I go up 10, up another 20, I've gone up 30 volts. So this is in agreement with what we've just done above, when VA was my reference, I got a 30 volt difference between VA and VC. However, in this case, the number I write down for VC is 20 volts because all of this is with respect to VB being zero, not VA. That's the slightly confusing part about this. So what are my key points? The first one is, Reference is arbitrary. I can choose any node as my reference node. It doesn't really matter which one I choose. However, sometimes it's far simpler to choose one node over another. As we go through examples in this course, I'll demonstrate how I might choose a reference for that very reason. Number two, with a reference, 
I can write down node voltages. What that allows me to do is move away from just the element voltages themselves that I have to specify and write down voltages of a particular point in the circuit rather than a voltage across an element. I strongly recommend that you work a little bit on this concept. Once you understand it, circuit analysis will become easier as the course progresses. Thank you.